All right, so I am replacing the nacelle on my 2014 Harley Davidson Switchback. Um, there are no, literally no videos on how to take this off on YouTube. I looked for hours, days, and couldn't find anything. Um, so I was told by several people that you have to either remove the gas tank or you have to slide the gas tank back, you have to bolt everything. Not true. So, I'll come inside because it's already tilted over. So, sorry, I've already started. But right here, see this hole right here? There are these rubber grommets that are just sitting right here like this. You just pop those out. And then your wires feed through here. So you have to take the wires off in order to be able to get the, nacelle, the upper nacelle off. So, this wire right here was fed up through here, up here to the handlebars. All right, so these wires aren't underneath the tank. All you have to do is gently push these other wires that are in here, move them around, and then pull on these ones. And these connectors are really only sitting like right here. So you don't have to unbolt the tank. You can just, Pull these out, start fishing on these wires and gently pulling on these ones and these connectors will eventually pop out and then you can unplug them and do whatever you need so that way you can take the upper nacelle off, which will be my next part. All right, to remove the upper nacelle, there's two bolts. There's one right here, I already removed it, and there's another one right there on the other side. Here's the part I'm replacing it with, that's where they'll be. I just put them there to make sure they know where they go. And then, after you've done that, of course you have to remove your handlebars, but the upper nacelle comes right off. Now, this is the reason why it has a nacelle, because the triple G that's on there is not very attractive. Next step is to remove the lower nacelle. In order to do that, you have to remove the forks. Um, I've been told that you need to remove the front wheel first and then take one off at a time. Unfortunately, um, I don't have anybody to help me with this, so it might take me a little bit, but I'll post on a video of that here in a minute too. All right, sorry, I got a little ahead of myself. So the next step in order to remove the lower in the cell is you need to remove the brake caliper which is super simple. There's two bolts right here and right here. You need to remove those. There's a bolt that goes right here that holds this up to there. You need to remove that. And then you also need to remove the front fender, which is super easy. There's two bolts on each side. Remove those. Remove the front wheel. And then after you remove the front wheel, there are these bolts right here. There's one right there. There's one right here at the top. And there's one there on the other side and then um, one right here too on the lower side right there. You just need to loosen those up, but you're gonna wanna do one side at a time. So you're gonna wanna loosen the left side. And then once those are loose, you can, you can pull down the, um, the left fork and then you do the same thing to the right. And once those are off, there's two bolts under here, one right there and one right there. Remove those two bolts and then this nacelle will come off. And just like that, you've removed the nacelle. Um, overall, pretty simple process. Uh, it only took me about an hour to remove the, the nacelle. Um, you might even be able to do it in a little bit less time. Um, I ended up unbolting the tank um, be because that was before I knew that all I had to do was remove those rubber grommets and then I would have been able to have removed the um, or pulled the wires through the nacelle. So if I had known that, I probably could have saved myself an extra 20 minutes. But overall, a pretty simple process. It seems a little daunting at first, but um, it's not that bad. So one thing I'll mention is uh, 
If you're planning on upgrading your bars, you might as well do this at the same time. Um, reason being, if you're gonna replace your bars, I mean, you can get by using the original bushings that are there depending on how old your bike is. Mine's a 2014, it only had 7,000 miles on there. So I probably could have gotten by without replacing the bushings, but if you're gonna replace your bars, you might as well just upgrade or swap them out for the poly urethane brushings. Um, so, and it's so much easier to get them out without everything else there. So while you're here, spend 15 bucks, 20 bucks, get yourself some bushings, swap them out. And you know, then that's something you'll have to do later down the road.